Incredible news, Hot Staging V3, one of the key innovations planned for the future of Starship, has officially been unveiled during a recent SpaceX company presentation. This new version includes several exciting upgrades that signal major advancements in the Starship design. But that's not all. This event also brought with it several important revelations about the company's future direction and upcoming developments. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab has announced a delay to one of its upcoming missions. We'll break it all down for you in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's no secret that hot staging is one of Starship's most distinctive features. First introduced on Fly 2 to streamline stage separation, the heat shielding ring sits between the booster and the ship, channeling away scorching exhaust and mechanical stress. Over successive tests, it's proved its worth, simplifying separation, protecting critical structures, and smoothing out the transition to second stage burn. But back in 2024, during SpaceX's internal company update, Musk teased a radical redesign of that very hot staging ring. Drawing inspiration from the Soviet N-1 rocket's jettison mechanism, he hinted at a new V-3 configuration that could push the envelope further. Until now, that upgrade existed only in CAD renderings and animations. On stage at the 2025 company talk, however, the prototype finally made its public debut. Mounted behind Musk himself was the forward segment of a super heavy booster ring, wrapped in scaffolding and spotlit for maximum effect. This was the new hot staging ring for V3, and its differences from earlier models were immediately obvious. First, it wasn't a separate hoop you bolt on shortly before launch. Instead, the support struts tie directly into reinforced hardpoints on the booster's structure, with no standalone horizontal ring beneath. In practice, that means the ring becomes an integral part of the booster body. Installation time on the pad will drop because there's no separate component to hoist into place. And in flight, there's no need to jettison the ring at all, eliminating one more piece of hardware to reclaim or discard. In other words, the structure that shields the booster during separation can stay for its own landing burn, bringing ship one step closer to full reusability. Second, and perhaps even more important, the V3 ring's design is far more open. Older hot staging rings sported relatively small vent holes, which did the job of diverting heat and pressure, but still presented enough back pressure to interfere with the ship's lower engines. Many engineers speculated that this engine suffocation contributed to failures on Flight 7 and 8 when Raptor engines struggled under abnormal exhaust flows. The new V3 ring, by contrast, is nothing more than a network of zigzagging struts, creating vast open channels for exhaust to escape. Hot gases and shock waves now stream freely downward, minimizing pressure buildup and keeping the second stage engines breathing clean. The ring's taller profile adds another layer of protection. By extending higher above the booster dome, it ensures that the searing exhaust from the ship's raptors can't scour critical systems, especially the grid fins, before they clear the ring. In earlier versions, grid fins sometimes experienced scorch marks or mechanical shock from passing flames. V3's greater clearance and open design should spare them from those hazards, smoothing out critical aerodynamic control surfaces. Ease of manufacture and refurbishment also also figures into the V3 design, where the old ring required multiple welds, plate seams, and post-flight overhaul, the new lattice structure is simpler to forge, assemble, and inspect. Each strut is self-contained and modular, so damaged sections can be replaced quickly without tearing down the entire ring. The result? Lower turnaround time between flights and reduced maintenance costs. Two key metrics on the path to rapid reuse. But the hot staging ring is only one piece of V3's broader booster overhaul. During the same presentation, SpaceX engineers showcased the revised booster dome. Gone is the pronounced outer collar that once cradled the ring's base. In its place, the dome itself wears a smoother curve with fewer obstructions around its pressurant lines and plumbing runs. That uncluttered dome not only sheds heat more evenly, but also directs exhaust upward and outward rather than trapping it around critical weld seams. Perhaps most striking was the repositioning of the grid fin mounts. On V2 boosters, the fins sat too close to both the dome and the hot staging ring, leaving them vulnerable to thermal and mechanical shock at separation. On V3, those mounts have shifted downward farther from the action of the second stage exhaust. The new cutouts on the booster body make room for both ring and dome exhaust, allowing grid fins to deploy clean, cool, and undamaged. 
Taken together, these innovations promise a leap forward in reliability, reusability, and performance. SpaceX says that B-18, the next booster in the building queue, will be the first V-3 prototype. With ring, dome, and fin upgrades installed, engineers expect to roll B-18 to Mega Bay for stacking in the coming weeks. If all goes to plan, a full V-3 booster could stand on the launch mount before the end of the year, ready for its maiden flight. This isn't just a cosmetic refresh. The integrated hot station ring, the lightweight lattice design, and the dome-slash-fin reconfiguration all aim to shave mass, cut down refurbishment time, and eliminate steps in the pre-launch and in-flight sequence. In a perfect world, V3 will land under its own power, ring intact, trimmed, and turned around for the next mission faster than any rocket in history. So, are you ready for V3's debut? If so, let us know. Welcome V3 in the comment section down below, then like this video, subscribe to our channel, and keep pace with SpaceX's rapid evolution. Continuous improvement drives us forward, and the V3 booster promises to be one of the next giant steps on the path to truly routine, full reusability. Musk's latest presentation was packed with eye-opening details about where Starship is headed. We already saw the first V3 hot staging ring prototype, but the talk went further, revealing new dimensions, engine layouts, and even even production rate goals. First, Musk walked us through the evolving size of Starship, Flight 9 stack, Booster V1 at 71 meters and Ship V2 at 50.3 meters, stands about 121 meters tall. In the next intermediate upgrade, both stages grow slightly, the booster to 72.3 meters and the ship to 52.1 meters, for a combined 124.4 meters. These modest increases will accommodate larger tanks, a beefed-up hot staging ring, and engine system tweaks. But the full V3 design, the one that will serve as the workhorse for orbital fueling, lunar landers, and Mars missions, soars to 142 meters. That version stretches the booster to 81 meters and the ship to 61, a scale just shy of last year's 150 meter concept. In practice, we'll see those first true V3 prototypes in coming months, with B-18 and S-39 at the 124.4 meter intermediate height before the leap to 142 meters later this year. Engine layouts will change too. The new ship design will shed its protective covers around the Raptors, exposing a next-generation powerhouse, Raptor 3. Musk shared images from exhaustive ground tests over 300 firings, totaling some 16,000 seconds of burn time, showing the engine's simplified plumbing and integrated cooling loops. On the ship itself, the engine count will rise to nine Raptors, trading one row of grit fins for three larger, more efficient fins. While the booster adopts upgraded chines along its sides to improve aerodynamic control. Production was another hot topic, the Giga Bay facility, planned in place of the old high bay at Boca Chica and mirrored at Cape Canaveral, is designed to churn out up to a thousand starships per year. Musk says the scale is vital for hitting the flight rates needed for orbital refueling, lunar infrastructure, and eventually cargo traffic to Mars. Speaking of Mars, Musk unveiled an ambitious colonization roadmap. By 2026, SpaceX plans five uncrewed landings, each delivering 10 metric tons of cargo, enough to test landing systems and deploy robotic scouts. In 2028 and 2029, they aim for 20 missions annually, each carrying 75 tons to begin constructing habitats, power systems, and resource extraction gear. Early in the next decade, 2030 and 2031, Starship flights ramp up to 100 missions per year, each loaded with 150 tons of supplies, jump-starting large-scale base construction. By 2033, the goal is 500 missions per year, each with 300 tons of cargo, enabling full industrial activity, resource harvesting, and an expanding human presence. The moon figures into this too. Musk hinted at Moon Base Alpha, the first permanent lunar settlement, which Starship will help build in parallel with Mars infrastructure. Orbital refueling and station-keeping prototypes tested on Earth and in lunar orbit will pave the way for sustained operations on both bodies. Among these sweeping plans, Musk promised to delve deeper in future updates covering orbital refilling, advanced heat shields, and the ultimate ship-catching systems. But even at a glance, the session made one thing clear. Starship's growth in size, power, and production capacity is about much more than breaking records. It's a calculated march toward a new era of routine, large-scale space missions. Whether launching dozens of satellites a month, sustaining a permanent moon base, or opening the floodgates to Mars colonization. Stay tuned for our upcoming deep dives into each of these revelations. The Starship story is only just beginning. Meanwhile, 
Rocket Lab's mission cadence remains strong, but one of its upcoming electron launches has slipped by a few days. The mission, nicknamed Full Stream Ahead, was set to blast off on the 28th, carrying a next-generation Earth observation satellite for Virginia-based Black Sky. However, Rocket Lab announced on X that teams will stand down from today's launch to allow for additional checkouts, and with unfavorable weather in the forecast, are now targeting no earlier than the 3rd of June, New Zealand time. As before, liftoff is expected around around 1.15 p.m. NZT, or 1.15 p.m. Eastern, from Rocket Lab's dedicated launch pad on New Zealand's Mahia Peninsula. The company will open its live stream 30 minutes before launch, so you can tune in via Rocket Lab's channels or catch coverage on space.com if they share the webcast link. Once aloft, Electron's kickstage will place Black Sky's latest high-resolution imaging satellite into a 470-kilometer polar orbit. According to Rocket Lab, this satellite will join the remainder of the company's constellation, delivering very high-resolution imagery and AI-enabled analytics for daily intelligence operations. In fact, Full Stream Ahead represents the second of four Electron missions Black Sky has booked this year to deploy its Gen 3 satellites. It will also be Electron's 65th flight overall and the company's seventh mission in 2025, further cementing Electron's role as one of the industry's busiest small sat launchers. Rocket Lab's ability to rapidly turn around these flights despite occasional delays keeps it firmly in second place behind SpaceX in terms of launch frequency. Each successful mission not only adds capacity to Black Sky's commercial imaging services, but also demonstrates Electron's reliability and the robustness of Rocket Lab's operational teams. We'll be watching closely as June 3rd approaches. Once liftoff finally occurs, Electron will once again prove its value in the growing Constellation market, and Rocket Lab will take another step toward its goal of providing on-demand, high-throughput access to space. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.